Alright, welcome back. This is part two of the NK headless guitar setup. And right now, as you can see, I have the neck is attached to the body. And what I ended up doing with this is in the last video, I ended up doing a leveling, crowning, and polishing of the frets. And putting the neck on the guitar, I have some oak veneer that I ended up putting a shim underneath, basically about this size underneath the neck in order to give the neck a little bit of a back arch to it because I was having a problem where like I don't have a regular straight edge I have to invest in one but if I set this on top of the frets like each one of these frets is touching the flat surface of the metal it didn't have any play here at all even with the uh, saddle all the way down and I want to get into these saddles here in a little bit because they're kind of interesting. Now, if anybody's wondering what the radius of this neck is, it is a number 12. So it's a 12 inch radius. Let's get into this bridge a little bit because it's kind of cool the way they have this thing set up. So let's get a closer look. So yeah, right now we are looking at the bridge on this guy and uh, it's pretty cool as far as this bridge goes. It's, it's kind of an interesting uh, I've never seen anything like this before, and uh, I probably will never will on another guitar, unless it's one of these NK guitars, not too sure. So, how do you, how do you wind the strings? Well, it comes with a little crank right here, and you would stick that on top of these tuner, tuning pegs, and you would turn this either one way or the other and the string will wrap around these little spindles right over here and uh you know the tighter you want it you just keep on turning this and it also could be used as fine tuning so you can turn these by hand if you want to fine tune things uh, there is a screw on the inside of these you do not want to tighten those screws up really really tight that are in here if you get your guitar your nk and these are kind of loose then you might want to add a little bit of tension on these screws uh, a little bit of pressure more to tighten these things up now right now i have these to where i can actually turn these by hand and it's a little tight but not really really tight so you don't want to tighten up those guys too much now as far as the saddle goes for each string now you can kind of see here there's two set screws that are poking out on the top of the bridge now these little drums that are inside of here you have your roller that's on them this little drum that's inside of here will spin up or down depending on which screw you are turning so if you're turning this outside screw right here you will actually make this saddle go upwards if you loosen this one up and you start turning on this one here, it'll actually make it go down. And to lock it in place, basically, whichever one you left at, say if you were raising it up, you know, you get it up to the position, then you'd use the opposite one to lock it in place to keep that from moving uh, any, you know, just moving anywhere. And it, it's pretty interesting. Now, in order to set your intonation, which is just kind of a little bit of a pain in the ass, and I'm not too sure if you're going to be able to see that, but... There is a little Allen screw right there, right underneath the string. So the keys that they come with, the two sets of Allen keys right here, are a little bit obsolete as far as trying to adjust that. What you're going to need is you're going to need a set of metric Allen keys that uh, have the ball on the end. That way you can go a little bit on an angle from the string to get inside there and to bring these forward and backward to adjust your intonation so right now i'm pretty much ready to string this thing up i just have to get the camera in place to where you can see how this is done now the top of the headstock is pretty simple well headless there are some holes now this is wood so this is probably a piece of uh, ebony and there are some holes that are drilled in there and you feed your strings through there and the ball sits in the top. Now, when you're feeding your strings inside of here, what they should have done is they should have angled the fretboard a little bit on the front over here. That way it will make the string go upward. So you're going to have to take, say, like the, the smallest of the two uh, Allen keys and go underneath the string and raise the string up as you're feeding it through. Now, some people were saying in some other videos that it comes with this tool here for adjusting the, uh, the neck. And some people were saying that the hole that is inside of the top of the, the neck didn't line up with the truss rod. This one lines up perfectly, have no problems with it, and is fully adjustable forward and backwards. 
<coughs> excuse me. So I'm basically ready to go ahead and string this up. So what I want to try to do is get as much information as possible doing this. This way you guys, um, you guys can all really see how this is done without having too much of a problem. So let's get on to that. All right, so the neck radius of this guitar is a 12 inch radius. So I have a 12 inch radius gauge here. And what I'm gonna put on this guitar are nines. So let's get to that. Got some Ernie Ball Cobalt Slinky. Right Nine to 42s. So let's get this thing started. So I'm gonna start off with the 42. Right now the neck is pretty much straight and there's a little trick to stringing this thing up as well all right so you feed the string through the headstock and you go up underneath the string as it comes through to the other side and i raise up a little bit here and then feed the string through otherwise it's hitting the string will hit the uh fretboard and it makes it a little bit of a pain in the ass to try to feed that through so when you get this on here, you want to pull this thing in to make sure that's in the hole. And then you go back to this side here where the body is. And right now I got the low E string. All right, so as you can see, this string is a lot longer than, than the bridge is. So what I have have seen other people do is basically go from an inch off the bridge or a half inch off the bridge and then go ahead and cut the excess off. That gives you enough to wind it around this drum over here. Now there's a small hole and you want to put that string in that small hole. I'll get it started and gotta find that hole. All right, so I'm in there. Now what you want to do is you want to see the string kind of come out the other side pull it back a little bit on the wound strings. The wound strings have no problem locking them in place and then you want to turn it clockwise and it'll start to wind itself up around that barrel. Like so. So go to the next one. 32. Same thing at the headstock. You, know, you want to be careful that uh, trying to feed the string through this headless guitar that uh, you're able to string it up without having any troubles with the string being stuck. Give the string a little bit of a yank. Suck that ball in there. Give yourself a little about a half inch from the bridge. Cut it. All right, locate the hole that's in the spindle over here. Fish your string through it. So you start seeing a little bit come out the other side. Pull it back a little bit. And start winding her up. Pretty simple. Next string, same way. All right, so now we're going to go to the other strings that are on here that are not wound strings. And we're going to start with the 16. These are a little bit more of a pain in the ass to get to lock onto these little drums or spindles or whatever you want to call them, tuner pegs or whatever. So again, same thing as before. Fish your string through the, the headstock or lack of headstock. Go underneath the string, tilt it up a little bit so you can fish it through. These are a little bit more of a pain in the ass because they're a little bit more tighter. Grab the string, pull it, 
make sure it's in give yourself about an inch or a half inch and cut her all right so these do a little bit differently because they're a little bit more of a pain in the ass what i end up doing is locating the hole fishing the string in that hole once i find it Now this I will let the string come out to the other side a little bit. And the string you could see it, I don't know if you can see it in this camera or not, but you can see the string come out to the other side and it's touching the edge of the where these tuners are. I pull it back just a little bit, leaving some of the string sticking out on the other side of that hole. Reason being is because they will pop out. And then go ahead and start to wind her up. Because there's really no way of locking these strings around these tuners. Or lack of tuners. Push the string through again, again using something, a small screwdriver or something, come up underneath the string, pick the string up a little bit, slide it through, Make sure she's on the headstock or in that hole, give yourself about an inch or a half an inch cut. Feed or find the hole to feed it through. There you go. Again, having some of the string stick out the other side. I think I got it. Nope, I don't have it. Again, these are a little bit of a pain in the ass trying to get these strings in these holes. Now I see it. Alright. String will come through a little bit, pull it back just a little bit, leaving some of the string sticking up. Start cranking her down. See, now this is nice. Now I actually have some adjustment here. The string is all the way down on top of the fretboard. And uh, now I can go ahead and give it some uh, action height. Before I could not do that. Now there's no problems. So let me get rid of all the papers and the mess. Alright, so what I'm looking for as far as action height goes is a sixteenth on the high E. Now, I am not going to uh, tune this thing up to pitch just yet. I do want to get my saddle where I want it to be, and then I'll start fine-tuning things. I have to adjust the neck as well. But for right now, I want to adjust the action height at the first uh, on the first string. at the 12th fret to a 16th and once I get once I turn this thing and start bringing up that saddle I'll start getting my adjustment All right, this thing's getting in the way All right, I am at a sixteenth right now, and I'll go to the screw set screw closest to me and start turning that to lock that saddle in place. All 
All right, so that one's locked in place. And now I want to go to the low E. And I want to give that about 564. So again, I'm going to raise the saddle. I'm at 564, so now I want to lock it in place. All right, so that's locked. So right now, all the strings should be off the fretboard. Now what I want to do is I want to tune it to pitch. Turn on my tuner. And get this thing pretty much tuned to pitch and then I'll adjust the neck for the neck re uh, relief. Okay. Now I did not stretch the strings yet on this. So I'm going to go back and stretch these guys out now. Retune. All right, so right now I have the pretty much in tune. And what I want to do right now is check the, the neck as far as what I have for relief. I'm going to use a 12 thousandths shim. Twelve thousand shim. Hold this upright. Fret at the where the body neck meets the body. And I have to add some relief. Now this is going to change my action height. Now 
Okay, I can live with that. So what I want to do is tune it back up again. So we're tuned up again. And now what I want to do is set the action height for each string. Now, this is where my 12,000 radius is going to come in. So what I want to do is I'm going to hold the hmm. So now this is where my 12,000 radius is going to come in once I set up the action height for the out two outside strings. So right now I am a little bit higher than 564 ths. So what I want to do is I want to loosen the lock. Then get in there. There you go. So I'm going to loosen the lock on the bridge. like that and lower the saddle by turning this one backwards and that's where I want that one all right and then I'll go to the outside string and Oh yeah, that needs to come down too. Loosen the lock. Loosen the adjustment. Bring this in. That should be pretty much close to where I want to be. There you go, now she dropped. All right, and that will lock that in place. All right, so check the other string again, make sure that's where I want it. I want it. I got a sixteenth on the high E and five sixty fours on the low. Make sure his puppy is locked into place. Then what I want to do is I want to take the radius and go underneath the strings with it pull it through and hold it up so I can actually see, see right now it's teeter-tottering so I know that I am not set to the radius of this neck this is where the fun part comes so I gotta unlock these guys here and then loosen them all actually these guys need to go up I'll start in the center because that seems where it's really needs to go up is the center. I 
that one's good. Such a small set screw, you can barely find them. One side done. I guess this is a real pain he has to find the damn holes. So what I'm looking for is strings ringing out. Okay, so I need to adjust this side a little bit more. Alright, so now I'll lock these fuckers in place. Because right now I should have it pretty much the radius of what it needs to be. Man, I cannot see worth the shit. Get in there. Lock it in place. Lock this one in place. This one in place. And lock this one in place. Alright, now double check my settings to make sure that nothing changed. And we are right where I want it to be. So now if I go and I check to see what the action height is on all the strings. 560 forts. 560 forts.
So now I got to tune her back up again. And where did that little key go? There you are. All right, so next thing I want to do with this thing is I actually want to let it sit overnight to get the strings to stretch by themselves. And then go over all the settings again that I just made to make sure that everything is right where I want it to be. And uh, so far, it's so good. Thanks for watching this. I'll get back with this uh, again another day and uh, finish the setup. Complete it, be done, and hopefully make some noise with it. Thanks for watching.